And um, that day I was in my office and somebody asked to see me. It was a third floor of the building, the front building on Oregon Road. And when he walked in, he gave me what I suppose must have been the equivalent of $10 in Nigerian Naira today. And he told me, he said, I want to give you this. And I'm going to come back in three months' time and give you $50. And three months later, he came back and gave me $50. That young gentleman today is giving millions of dollars to the gospel. And he happens to be the one that just introduced me. Pastor Femi Olumarewa. <laughs> Lift up your hands and worship the Lord. With every breath, I tell of your wonders. When I breathe, then breathe out. Oh, the thinking of you. Oh, 
people to be in attendance in a life-changing conference of this kind and also to share a few thoughts with you this morning. Praise God. I also thank the highly esteemed members of the Central Executive Council and our very own Sekjen. Thank you so much, SG, for this opportunity. Praise God. You know, when you think about this Sekjen, you remember the words of Scripture as Barnabas was described. The Bible says, for he was a good man. SG, you are a good man. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I also thank our other facilitators, Pastor Joseph Akinwalemiwa, who is in the North York Center in Canada, Pastor Biotan Lawal, who has a very unique way of staring us to be the very best that the man of God and the Holy Ghost wants us to be. And Pastor Dan Ray, who has a very unique way of communicating God's word. Pastor Dan Ray, thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you listen to Pastor Dan Ray and you are not changed, I don't know what will change you. Yes. Pastor Femi, thank you so much. Thank you so very much, Pastor Femi, attending Black Bay. And of course, our chief host, Pastor Ose, we are Kilome. Thank you so very, very much for making our stay here so beautiful. Pastor Aloy, thank you so much, regional pastor, USA Region 1. And of course, our Zona pastors, Pastor Mike and Pastor Femi. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And all our group pastors, pastors and leaders. Blessed be God. You know, I was, um, yesterday I was telling Pastor Ose something. I said to her, we were in the lounge, and I said to her, I said, there is, um, I was reminiscing on the impact, you know, that was, I said, yesterday, on the impact that this conference had had on us, every one of us in attendance. And I was telling her something that I told the and I was telling evangelist, Dr. Diawase, why we're having the STPPL in Douala, Cameroon, and Abishan in Cote d'Ivoire, just um, um, sometime in March. And I said that um, there's something we always say, and um, sometimes folks who might think it's just a cliche, we say, this program was the best ever. You know, we come from an IPPC and we say this IPPC has been the best ever. We say this MBTC has been the best ever. It's not just a cliche. It's the reality. Because what we find is that there is something about the grace of God upon our ministry that makes it such that Every time we move to the next and higher level. And with the Lord, there is really nothing as there is really nothing as being static, as being in one place. You just find there is always something higher. Glory to God. So really, this STPPL has been the best ever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. One thing that you can be sure is that in this program, these past few days, we have been radicalized. We've been radicalized. You know, there are people who think about that word radicalized, you know, from a negative perspective. They think about 
the terrorists of this world. They say, oh, the guy is radicalized and the guy decided to commit acts of terrorism. But you see, if you are raised to go in a particular direction, believing something so strongly that you would admit nothing else that's contrary to what you believe in evidence, you surely have been radicalized. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in this program, we have been radicalized. Hallelujah. For the cause of the gospel, we've been made to understand that something has been committed to our trust and we've got to prosecute it. And we will prosecute it. As we go back to our various cities and towns and states, we are going back with singleness of purpose, singleness of mind to get the job done. Hallelujah. Being radicalized and somebody sees you and they can see that you've come with a different kind of conviction. They can understand that you have come from somewhere. You know, it's just, it's just, like, it's just like those disciples of Jesus. The Bible says when when the members of the Sanhedrin, when they looked at them and saw that they were ordinary, uneducated fishermen, the Bible says they took note of them that they had been with Jesus. So it would be obvious that you went somewhere. Hallelujah. And wherever you went, you were radicalized. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But there are three important questions I want you to consider this morning as we begin to wrap up the STPPL 2023. Three very, very important questions. I want you to think about and maybe consider preferring an answer. It will be your personal answer. One of the things we always say is that when you come for a program, it's not so much what you hear, but what you do with what you hear. And um, I think the CGI director put it very, very succinctly several years ago when he said to us in the program, he said, the best way we can say thank you to a man of God for what we have heard is to become what we have heard. In other words, put to work what we have heard. And with that, you're saying thank you. Without, without saying, Pastor, thank you, just the fact that you have put to work what you have heard and produced results with a prolific results, that is enough thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So three important questions this morning. Number one, I'll read from Matthew's gospel and then I'll tell you the question. Matthew's gospel chapter number 27. I'm reading from the 23rd verse. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus which is called Christ? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, why? What evil had he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. Pilate said, what shall I do with Jesus? That's a question. And we might ask that question today. What will you do with Jesus? 
What will you do with the message you have received? When Pilate asked the question, they said, crucify him. Damn it, crucify this guy. Get him out of the way. You're a Christian. You've received the Lord. You've received the Holy Ghost. Plus that, you have received so much information, so much knowledge. You've been loaded with so much revelation. You're full. Almost busting at the seams. Question. What will you do with what you have received? What will you do with it? When they gave the conclusion that's the, the crowd, Pilate tried to sway them in another direction. They insisted, no, this is what we want. Put him away completely. What will you do with the message? You've been impacted by the Holy Ghost. You've been impacted by the word of God. What's going to happen with what you have received? Will it be business as usual? Reminds me of the lepers, the four lepers. The Bible says Samaria was surrounded by the adversaries. They were going to bring it down to its knees through famine. And it had gotten so bad, really so bad, that the people were now eating their children until Elisha prophesied and he said, there's going to be a change in 24 hours. And the Bible says the next day, four lepers who were outside the gates thought to themselves, we're going to die here. The family is bad inside. There's no food outside. Let's go to the camp of the Syrians and ask them for food. I mean, if they kill us, we're already dead anyway. I mean, we're already dead. If we, if, we, if we stay here, we die. So if we go over there, perchance, they might give us something. Alternative, they just shoot us on sight. But whichever way, I mean, at least that just something come out. The Bible says that they went. They discovered that the entire camp of the adversary had been emptied. You know, the enemy... You know, they, have, they seem to have escaped in confusion. Because the Bible says, the Lord made them to hear a sound. And they were scared. And they said, oh, Israel has hired some other foreign armies. Now they're against us. So they escaped in terror. But then, as these guys, you know, in their excitement, you know, they ate, they drank. You know, they collected valuables, you know, and went to hide them. Then, 2 Kings chapter number 7, verse number 9. Then, they said one to another, we do not well. This, the, we, the, then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. We hold our peace. Today is a day of good tidings and we're quiet. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come that we may go and tell the king's household. So they decided this news, good news, this impactful news that they have received, they've got to tell it. They've got to announce it. They said, we can't be quiet. We can't be quiet. A man of God has made, us understand, made, has made us to understand the urgency of the times. We understand that we're in the last days. We understand the time is short. We understand the window is short. Would we dare to be quiet? We can't be quiet. 
We can't. Now is the time to function with speed in our soul winning efforts, in our partnership efforts with speed. Because there is urgency. They say, they, they say to one another, we do not well. For this day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. We can't hold our peace. Praise God. Number two, what will you do for Jesus? That's the second question. What will you do for Jesus? You ask yourself, what am I going to do for the master? It was William Carey, a great missionary, who said, attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God. And when man of God, Pastor Chris shared that quote with us, he told us, notice he didn't say expect before attempt. He said attempt, first of all. Attempt great things for God. Because when you attempt great things for God, then you can expect great things from God. Hallelujah. A lot of times people are waiting. They're expecting, oh, God, do something. God, do something. No, you step out and do something. When you step out and do something, you find he's back of you. That's what happens. That's the deal. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. You step out in faith. You speak the word and the anointing backs the word. Attempt great things for God. Then you expect great things from God. Like we were, we were, we were sharing about, about, um, about Caleb the other day. And we read how that Caleb, maybe we should go through that scripture again, Joshua chapter number 14, verse number 6, very quickly. Joshua chapter number 14, verse number 6. It says, then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the man of God said unto Moses, that the Lord, thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and the in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. But... He said, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children forever, because thou hast wholly followed the, Lord that followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake unto Speak this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now lo, and this day forty, four score and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then. Even so is my strength now for war, but to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Praise God. He was going to attempt something for the Lord. He was going to, he was going to step out. He said, look, he said, look, this promise was given to me 45 years ago. He said, I'm as strong today as I was then. I'm ready to step out. He wasn't asking for an army. He wasn't asking for resources. No. He said, just tell me to go. He said, give me the permission. And we read, we read, we read, as we, re as we went on, we read that he actually took Hebron. And we find, give us verse number 16. Oh, is it 14 now? 14, verse 14. Next verse. It says, verse 15, it says, And the name of Hebron before was Kajat Abba, which, uh, which Abba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. It turns 
turns out, Hebron was the last bastion of resistance to the children of Israel. And it took an 85-year-old man to break the resistance. The final place that was taken, the Bible says, the conclusion of that chapter, the land had rest from war. <laughs> Hallelujah. The land had rest from war. I was talking to one of our sisters yesterday. She said, when three years old, and she said to me, she said, Pastor, my husband and I, we're going to start a church. Our husband is 76. She's 73. They're both here. So we're going to start a church. Hallelujah. When are you starting your church? Someone is 73, 76. They say, we want to start. At 73 and 76, some people are, they are writing their will and choosing their graves. This one says, I want to do something significant for the gospel. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What will you do for Jesus? Oh, I was reading about a certain gentleman. Um, it was, um, his name is John Getty, a missionary. John Getty. He was a missionary to, in the South Pacific. And he had been ministering there for several years. And then when he died, they put up a tombstone. On his tombstone, the effigy that they wrote on him, that they wrote on his tombstone, I read it out to you. John Getty. When he landed in 1848, there were no Christians here. When he left in 1872, there were no heathen. <laughs> Hallelujah. When he arrived, there were no Christians. <laughs> Glory to God. There were no Christians. By the time he was living 24 years later, there were no heathen. It can happen in your city. It can happen in the community. It can happen in that organization. It can happen. You know, we, we bring the power of God to bear upon the environment and we insist this is what must happen. This is what must happen. Book of Psalms, chapter number 71, reading from the 17th verse. It says, Oh God, thou has taught me from my youth and he that oh have I declared thy wondrous works now also when I'm old and gray headed O oh God forsake me not until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come <laughs> glory to God hallelujah I mean, this guy, he, he's saying, he's saying, he's saying, look, I, I, I've, I've experienced God, you know, in several things in my life. He said, he said, now that I'm old, he said, forsake me not. He said, until I have unleashed your power, showed your strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. So you're determined in that, in that home, in that family, in that extended family, that community. You're determined. We're going to bring the power of God to bear upon this place. We're going to shake this place up with the power of God. You tell yourself, we're going to do it. With all that we've had in this conference, no, no, you can't be quiet. You can't be quiet. Hallelujah. He said, I bring your power to bear upon the environment. I unleash your strength, your power upon the system. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. What will you do for Jesus? What will you do? What will you do? You're not, ask, you're not asking God to help you. Don't, don't, don't say, God, help me. No, that's the wrong prayer. Don't, don't say, help me. No, just step out. Step out. Moses turned to God. I mean, he, he was in front of the Red Sea. He was in front of the Red Sea. The children of Israel were very angry with him. You know, they were offended. They said, we told you to leave us alone. Egypt's army bearing down on them. The Red Sea in front of them. Nowhere to go to. They're right in the middle. Moses turns to God and God says, Moses, this is not the time for prayer. He says, stretch forth your hand over the sea. Do something. Do something. Do something. Are you following, brothers and sisters? Do something. Do something. When you do something, then you expect the power of God to back what you've done. You expect God's power. Listen, we have been praying. Don't you understand? We have been praying. Unending prayers, unending praise. So it's not, the, the prayer is always going on. There's plenty of praying going on. Plenty of praying. Now, action hallelujah mark's gospel chapter number 16 reading from the 19 verse the bible says from the from the 20th verse the bible says and the disciples went forth and they preached everywhere they went forth and they preached everywhere the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. They went forth and preached everywhere. They went. As they went, the Lord was walking with them. And miracles, signs, and wonders began to take place. But they went. Listen, they went. Hallelujah. Every time, every time the Lord wanted to heal somebody, he would say, stretch forth your hand. In other words, do something. He would give an instruction, stretch forth your hand. Rise up and take up your bed. Are you following? So, so in, in the same way, in the same way, you've got to do something. Listen, if you don't lay hands, if, if you, you can watch the sick until he dies. You're watching him. But you can decide to lay your hands on that person and a miracle takes place. You've got to do something. Number three, the third question. What will you win for Jesus? What will you win for Jesus? In nineteen fifty, the World Cup finals was played between Uruguay and Brazil. Everybody expected Brazil to win. When the 90 minutes were over, Uruguay won the World Cup by 2-0. The whole nation was broken. As a nine-year-old boy, he's at home. As he's crying, he looks up and sees his father also crying. His father always told him, Men don't cry. 
but his father was crying. So in that depth of emotion, I mean, he was so touched. He cleaned out his eyes because he thought for me as a little boy, I could be crying, but not my dad. And he went to his dad and said, Daddy, don't worry. I'll win the World Cup for you. In 1958, he was playing for Brazil. And Brazil won the World Cup. That nine-year-old boy, who was now 17 years old, his name Pele. He won the World Cup for his dad. Not once, not twice, but thrice. So, Pele won the World Cup for his dad. What will you win for Jesus? It's a question that I'm sure you have an answer for. You can make a decision as to what you would win for Jesus. As to the impact you make for the gospel. As to the changes that will happen as per your results, as a result, I mean, as per, as per the results you produce because of this conference. And then somebody says, he was at STPPO. She was at STPPO. The results have changed, they have become prolific. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Judges chapter number six. I'm reading from verse number 16. The angel of the Lord had been trying to motivate Gideon to stand up for Israel and to take action. And the angel said to him, and the Lord said unto him, verse number 16, Judges chapter 6, verse 16, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And, and I, I, Pastor, Pastor Femi was sharing earlier on, and he, he quoted that scripture as one man. Why? Because you're anointed. Because you have everything. You don't, need anything, you don't need anything extra. Apart from all that the Lord has deposited inside you. So when you go, you find you smite the Midianites as one man. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean, think, think about, think about the, 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 the example that the CGI director was giving to us the other day, when he showed us how a cell can proliferate. Just one person from one lady. One lady. Very soon. So many. So many cells. And he started with one man. Thou shalt smite the medium as one man. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. As one man. As you go, you find you are full of the Holy Ghost. You find that every word that you speak goes for the power and ability. That's what you find. Every word goes forth with the ability. With the ability of the Spirit. Hallelujah. We, re we, re we, we read about, about David's mighty man. In 2 Samuel, the 23rd verse, reading from verse 18. And we find these guys who, who did, I mean, they didn't care who was with them and who wasn't with them. 
Sometimes they went out for battle. And the rest of the army went away. They disappeared. They faded out by reason of the toughness of the battle. But these men remained standing. And as one man, they brought victory to Israel. Thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As one man. As one man. Speak in other tongues. Speak in other tongues. Say as one man. As one man. Speak in other tongues. Say as one man. As one man. As one man. Liba ko Solomon gradiba shata baya. Man te ke baye. Bariga doso tala bayesa. Man te ke baye. Bariga dosa. Raka baya. Baso koto. Baraga deska. Oh, blessed be God. Hallelujah. Man te ke barasus. Hallelujah. Don't tolerate unproductivity. Don't tolerate unfruitfulness. Reverend Ken was sharing with us yesterday. He said, he said he could not sleep on his bed. He couldn't sleep on his bed. When he saw that the work was not growing. He said he lay on the, on the couch in the living room. He understood the scriptures. Woe unto them what is in Zion. So he couldn't be at ease. When things were not going the way he wanted. He couldn't sleep. He wanted to ensure it was as uncomfortable as ever. Don't put up with unproductivity. Don't put up with barrenness. Reminds me of Rachel. The Bible says Rachel came. Look at it in Genesis chapter number 30 verse 1. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Give me children or else I die. She had everything going for her. Her husband loved her. Her husband gave her everything. Only thing she didn't have. She didn't have children. Her elder sister had all the children. The maids had the children. There were children all around her. But she had no children. The Bible says she held on to the husband. She said, give me children or else I die. She was desperate. Sometimes your desperation must be elevated. Must be elevated. Where you draw a line. And some said, oh, you know, if we, if we, if we, um, if we fight against the, the crown, you know, there's going to be so much complexities. You know, there's going to be so much problem. You know, we already have peace in our country. You know, why don't you just let sleeping dogs lie? Just leave things the way they are. That meeting was taking place in Richmond, Virginia, some 1,300 miles from here. And finally, one gentleman stood up. I'd appreciate if you can give me that on the screen. The quote from He says, is life so there or peace so sweet? When this gentleman, when he gave his speech, and that was the conclusion of his speech, the pendulum swung in the direction of those who wanted independence. And they said, we are going to demand independence from Britain. Because he said, is life so there or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? 
He said, forbid it, almighty God. I know not what cause others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Sounds like Richard, right? He said, give me children or else I die. Can we have it, please? He says, is life so there or peace so challenges that were no longer hallelujah there is so much that we have received in our ministry so much that we have received so much that we have been raised with so much we've heard from our man of God so much that we have heard from those he has sent to teach us so much. And you know, if you, you know, there's a scripture, just leave this one on the screen. Don't, don't, don't take it out. There's a scripture. Um, in James chapter number three, you can turn there while this one remains there. I want it to remain there. He says, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. It's telling you that those of us who, who have knowledge, who, who are preachers, those of us who have learned the word of God, uh, he's telling you that there is a demand on us. He said, we shall receive the greater condemnation. For non-performance, that is. Why? You've got knowledge. In, in Luke's gospel, chapter number 12, verse number 47, Jesus said something. He said, and that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required and of whom men have committed much of him they will ask the more i just read from luke's gospel chapter number 12 from verse 47 to 48. hallelujah you know if somebody never heard then he will suffer the consequences of his ignorance because he didn't hear But to hear and to be silent it means you're guilty of the sin of quietness. Silence becomes a sin in that case. Even the lepers, they said, we don't want to commit the sin of silence. They said to be silent is wrong. He said, today is a day of good tidings. We cannot be silent. Are you following brothers and sisters? We cannot be silent. So much has been committed to our trust. So much has been given to us. We cannot be quiet. No excuses. The message that we've been that has been committed to us, the message is so precious. It's so precious. It can't, it can't, it can't remain uncommunicated. I read about the legend. The myth or the legend of the marathon. It was said that, this, that Greece was at war with the Persians. And um, 
they needed to communicate this particular message to Athens. There's a message, I have to go to Athens. And the gentleman was giving the message to bear. He was going to take it to Athens. It was such an important message. The battle was going on in the place called Marathon. And this gentleman taking this message as a Greek, as a Greeks created the distraction. He broke out and began to run. He began to run. He began to run. He's running to another city. He kept on running and running and running and running and running. He got to the gate of the city, delivered the message, and dropped and died. Upon delivering the message, he dropped down dead. Question. Do you think he died then? No. He, di he was already dead before he got there. Only problem is, he couldn't afford to die. He was dead on the way. But he couldn't afford to die because the entire destiny of a nation depended on this message. So even though he was dead, he kept on running. He had to deliver the message before he died. The message was too important. Too important. Hallelujah. This message, brothers and sisters, is too important for you to be sick. For you to say, oh, I'm sick. I couldn't go out. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, 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 I, I, want, I want to go home. Go home to where? You're not going anywhere. Too important. Every person needed for the work. Every hand needed for the work. Glory to God. Don't be quiet. Because to be quiet becomes a crime by reason of what you know stand up to your feet let's praise the lord now glory to god lift up your hands and worship the lord thank him and as you pray today as you pray today begin to make up your mind on the steps you're going to take immediate steps immediate steps immediate steps what you will do for the lord what you will win for the Lord. Territories you will take for the Lord. Glory to God. Let the visions of God be stirred in your soul. Let it be stirred in your spirit. Mangre boskete libra gadisku jato ke baliga santa la baya oh mangre bos sante le rege bos santa kabaya mali granga segede baron de sengre diga raka teke raga de bongre bos shekete mangre bos segediba raga desa ingrege boske bon jeto barina ranga tele bongreski balende krisata haya oh blessed be God ranka